Thank you for joining me for this composition notebook journal tutorial. As you know, I've purchased about 12 of these comp books and I am creating a playlist to alter each and every one. You can find the playlist on my channel in the description below or on the end screen. This particular journal I'll be altering using a paper bag and some dendritic printing. So I hope you'll join me. This is a brief look at the outcome. Let's get started in getting it created. Starting with the comp book, and I want to put some dividers in this one. So I have counted out the pages where I want to place these dividers. I'm going to tear these file folders in half and then cut them down to a size that works where that tab just peeks out over the edge of the page. So I'm measuring, I'll cut with my Friskers cutter or Fiskers cutter, however you say that. And we'll get these cut down to that size and we'll glue them into place. And that fits nicely. So I want to ink it up before I put it into place. I find it's a lot easier to do it that way and oftentimes I forget to ink and I go back and I have to carefully ink, try not to get the paper inked up. So fortunately, this time I did remember. So I'm utilizing some vintage photo distress oxide ink to just ink around the edges. And I do plan on decorating this up a little further later on in the project. Glitter glue to glue it into place. And I'll do that with all three. So I've just counted out the pages where I would like these to be. There's 100 pages in this comp book. I didn't get too picky. I just kind of chose a location more than, more than a true count. And I want these dividers, these file folder dividers, to line up well. So I've laid them into place as a whole and then marked where I need to cut them so they fall exactly where I want that tab to fall. I hope I'm making sense. But it's kind of a eyeball versus measure technique, if you will. And we'll link up those other two and get those glued in as well. So now I have this portion complete. I have three dividers in this notebook and they're laying in there very nice. The tabs are peeking out just as I wanted. So now let's get to covering the front and I'm using just a plain brown paper bag. I will cut that down to size and glue it into place. And what you see me doing here is cutting one end so that I have a very straight edge so I can place that up against the spine. And not have any overlap onto the spine or any of the comp book showing. So I'm going to trim that off larger then the cover, glue it into place, and I'm utilizing Yes Paste to glue. And once I get a good coating of that Yes Paste from edge to edge, I'll lay my paper bag on top and then flip it over and wrap it like a gift from the inside. And that gives the edges that paper bag cover as well. And I'm just making sure it is attached and adhered everywhere. I'm trimming off the edges and folding that over. And this is this paper bag is very thin, 
So you don't have to worry too much about these corners, pushing them in, etc., because you can just fold it over. It's thin enough that it doesn't create any bulk on the corners. And these are, are lunch bags that you can buy in packs of 100 at the grocery or the big box stores like Walmart. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back. So the covers are both down, front and back. I didn't put you through the pain of watching me glue the back. And now I, I'm, because this bag is thin, you can kind of see some of the comp book through it. So I've pulled out a burnt umber, and I'm just pushing that paint over that paper bag with a hotel key card. And I am picking up the ridges and the wrinkles in the paper, and I like the way this looks. It gives it that rustic kind of leather look, if you will. And I'm going to do this on front and back. And now, once that has dried, my covers have dried, I have two pieces of glass that I've purchased in inexpensive frames at the dollar store. And I put three dots of black paint on the bottom piece of glass. And I am making sure when I put these two glass pieces together that I offset them a little bit so I can pull them apart. And this creates my dendritic print. So now I'm just going to take that piece of glass and I've put a piece of file folder scrap underneath one corner so I can easily pull that off the book. And I just push that dendritic print down onto the cover of this book. And I like the way that looks. It just adds a real interesting element to the cover, but I have a lot of paint left over on my glass. You can see where smushing that glass together creates those nice ridges. And I'll go ahead and run those off on tissue paper and other paper and save them for later. But to get back to the book, now that I have my cover kind of complete, I want to go around the outside edge of the entire book with some black ink, just to kind of frame that in, give it a little more definition. And there is the front cover. I like the way that looks. How about you? I keep going back over the edge of that spine because there was just a little tiny white showing there. And I'm trying to get that covered up with this stays on black ink. So now I want to decide on my closure. And I think I want to do a closure like I've done on a previous book and just have that so that it pulls over. I'm using a piece of watercolor paper so it's more substantial. I'll coat that in some paper bag as well. And I'm just using some Mod Podge to lay that down or it's not Mod Podge, it's a mixture of glue and water. I'll put the description or the actual um, recipe up here where you can find that. And if you didn't get my shameless plug previously, please hit that like button. It does, it does help my channel. And of course, I would love to have you subscribe. So I'm doing the same process here to make the closure congruent with, with the cover. And once I have that complete, I shall glue it into place.
then go around it and kind of cover it, darken it up a bit with that stays on black ink pad. And there, I think that will work nice. And let's mark that, glue it into place. I think that's good placement. And now to add the inside front cover and inside back cover. I'm just laying down a coat of glue and water mixture, covering it with the paper bag. I didn't use the Yes Paste this time. And I'll just coat the top of it with that glue and water as well. I'll allow that to dry, but dry and then I'll flip to the front and do the same on the front. Once that is dry, I'm coming back with the raw umber, dragging it over with my hotel key card, and then I'll take that black ink and kind of rub across it to add that darkness into it as well, just like we did on the front cover. Just making sure I don't have any bleed over from the, from the paint. And now that everything has been Completed, inside fronts down, inside backs down, decorated with paint. I'm coming back with the <clears throat> Mod Podge hard coat and putting a coat of that on each. The front cover, the back cover, the inside front, inside back. Letting it dry from between each coat on each individual piece. While that's setting aside, I'm going to create my closure. So this is a toilet paper roll that I pulled out, cut in half, just punching two one-inch circles. I like the weight of the toilet paper roll. I painted these both black, front and back, punched a hole through the center. I will glue them together and affix a brad to attach these to that tab closure on the front cover. So let's just dry those off. We'll go back through the hole once again to get that paint out of the hole that we punched in the circles. Grab the bread, stick that through. I'm going to stick it through first and then just kind of squirt some glue down along the outside of that bread. Wipe off the excess glue, and it is good to go for that front cover. Let that dry. Poke the hole in the center of this tab. I'm just measuring to make sure I'm at the exact center. Punch that brad through. And now how I'm going to close this is I'm just going to cut a long piece of twine. Leave enough on one end, wrap it around that little tab closure that we made, and then wrap it and tie it in a bow. And I'm not going to bore you with that. You'll see it in the end pictures. But it's just a long string of twine that I'm cutting to close the book with a wrap. It also gives give so things can be added in. I left this in. I had um, a piece of cardstock, little shred of cardstock that had attached itself to the wet paint and it looks nasty so I want it to come off. I'm just taking it off with my exacto knife and there's also some paper that adhered to the bottom. So Rather than edit this out, I thought I'd show you how I corrected it. I'm putting a dab of paint over the top of it, a little bit of black ink, and covering that uh, where that paper was with the black ink around the bottom edge. And now to add some additional raw umber 
to just kind of disguise that spot we just fixed. And we'll let that dry or speed up the drying with the heat gun. And that's a little error that uh, we corrected there on the back cover. Inside front is done. I want to make sure that everything is glued into place well. And now I want to create a pocket. I'm going to glue two, the front two sheets of this book together to give it a little more sub substantial weight. And we're going to use some of this scrap paper that I pulled out of my scrap bin. I'm going to cut this scrap paper to the size of the page. So I'm going to take those white edges off first. And then I will cut the printed part or the painted part to the size. And this is just a <laughs> pull off that I used to clean my plate my gel press. Now I'm gluing page one and page two together. Look how that those lines run when you hit it with this wet glue. And just fold that over and that's glued together nicely now. And I want to cover the back of page two with the paper that we chose. By doing this that will allow me to have this as my fold over or as the opening to the pocket when we turn it like this. I just want to add some additional decoration. So for where that is going to reveal page number three, I'm going to cover that with dictionary pages. At the bottom of page number one, I am also going to cover with these dictionary pages. So there's the dictionary pages on page number three. I'll just dry that. Looks like I didn't go down far enough, so we'll fix that. And you can see where I put the dictionary pages on page one underneath where I folded that over and I also used a little piece of the paper bag. Just gluing once again to make sure everything is in place and now I'll go along the bottom and right side of that fold over and that creates a pocket with that dictionary page as the background. And remember I had all of that paint left on the glass when I did the dendritic print. I pulled that on pieces, pieces of tissue paper and pieces of paper bag. So now I'm going to rip around the outside edge of one of those and just glue it into place right here as a little decoration on that pocket. The other piece of mapping scrapbook paper I am going to use as a vertical pocket on the front cover. It will be nice when you're using this book to be able to store things in here that you may want to journal a little later on. If you have tickets from an event or recipes that you're saving, whatever you decide to use the journal for. And just gluing around the outside perimeter of that and gluing that into place. And there's that pocket completed. But I do want to add some additional embellishment to it. So I'm pulling out the liquid pearls. And we'll dot that up in a minute. There we go. I flipped through the book and you could see where I took that dictionary page paper and put um, on my dividers where they had white paper showing. I just covered that with the dictionary page. I'll show you again here in just a minute. And we'll let those liquid pearls dry. I'm going to go around the outside of that little 
divot and on the four corners of this vertical pocket as well. So there's our pocket. You can see on the dividers where I put that dictionary page. And now I want to add a belly band on the inside back cover. The twine that is going to close this book, once open, there's this massive amount of twine that just has no place to go. So the belly band will give us a place to tuck that twine from that closure when you have the book open and are journaling in it. The finished book, I think, turned out nice. I hope you like as well. Now you can see the twine closure that I've been talking about. Like I told you before, it's just a long piece of twine that you wrap. There's a close-up of the dendritic print. I did add a couple of charms onto the bottom of the twine. And I hope that you enjoyed this project and will join me for the rest of the composition books that I alter. I will put a playlist of those on my end screen. This is book number three. Four is complete, and I'm doing the editing of that right now, so that will be uploaded soon. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you will like this video, subscribe to my channel, and join me for the rest of the composition book makeovers. Bye for now.